On this video, we're going to learn how to work with random numbers. The tools for doing that are in the header file C standard lib. So we want to include that up here at the top. And now I'm going to use this variable that I've created number, and I'm going to call a function called rand, R-A-N-D, and it's a function, so it needs parentheses, but notice that it doesn't require any arguments, so the parentheses are empty. What this does is this create, returns a random number, and then I'm simply storing that random number in my variable rand, my variable number. Now I just want to print out that number, so I'm going to print it so I can see what it looks like, and I run that and I see that I got the number 41. Now if I want more than one random number, then I have to call this function more than once because each time it just returns one number. So if I want four of them, I have to actually call it four times. So here I'm going to call it four times and print it out each time. And there we go, I've got four different random numbers and they look pretty random, but what range are they in? Well, there's a way to tell the range that they're in. So with each system, they might vary just a little bit. So I can just simply, to find out what range they're in, I can uh, maximum number produced by rand. So there is a built-in named constant called rand max and that stores the maximum number produced by RAND. And so this will be different on every system and you can just simply print it to find out. On this system, the maximum number produced by RAND is 32,767. So every time you call RAND, it's going to give you a number between zero and this number. Now notice a disheartening fact. Every time I run this program, I'm getting exactly the same random numbers which won't work very well if I want to run the program and have it be different each time that I run it. So what we're seeing here is that this is a pseudo random number generator. And so one way that we can work to fix this is to seed it. And there's a function called srand, and it expects a single integer. Notice here an unsigned int is what is expecting to, it to get. So I'm going to use a variable there called seed. I need to come up here and create it. And I can simply set this to some integer like 2 or 23 or 956. And then I can run it. And notice how I got different random numbers. But if I run it again, because it's using exactly the same seed, I get the same different numbers. So what I want to do is I want to seed it with a value that changes every time I run the program. Well, we can't use just a number then because they always are the same every time we run them. But there's this really nice function. It's called time, and uh, it expects one argument, and zero works really good for that argument. Notice I'm getting a curly line. It's because this function is not known. This function is defined in the header file C time. All right, so now once I do that, it knows this function. So uh, this will produce the number of integers since January 1st, 1970. And that value will change every single second because it's that every time there's a new second, then it changes how many seconds there has been since January 1st, 1970. So now this will change every time. It turns out this is returning something of type time t, which is not an integer. So it will run, but it'll give us a warning. So let's go ahead and cast this to an int so we don't get that warning. I'm just going to static cast it to an int, call time, static cast it, put in the seed, and then it's going to seed this random number. Now when I run it, I get a new set of random numbers. Now look at it, and let's go ahead and run it again. And I got a different set of random numbers. So each time now, I'm going to get a different set of random numbers. And that will work better for what I want to do. 
Well, now our last problem is that we rarely want a number in the range from 0 to 32,767. It's more common that we would have a specific range that we would want. So we need to figure out how to get the numbers in the range that we want. Since this one produces a number in that specified range, we're going to use simple math to be able to take that number and change it so that it's in the range that we want. So let's use dice for example. So let's say if we're going to do dice, we want numbers in the range of 1 to 6. So the first thing we need to do is to figure out how many numbers are in our range. 1 to 6 is really easy. There are six different numbers in that range. So we're going to take the number that we're, is produced by Rand and we're going to mod it do you remember what mod does? Mod returns a remainder. We're going to mod it by 6. So that means if we divide this random number by 6, what are the remainders that are possible? Well, we could have a remainder of 0, and 1, and 2, and 3, and 4, and 5. Could we have a remainder of 6? No, because if we have a remainder of 6, it'll go in there one more time. So once we mod this number by 6, it's going to produce all of the, it's going to produce the remainder. So let's go ahead and do this to all of them so we can see what numbers we get here. So each time I've modded, let's go ahead and see what kind of range we're come up with. Now look at our range. Notice that we're getting something that could in fact be it's the remainder when you divide by 6. So all of those numbers are there. Let's run it again. We got a lot of zeros on that one. How unusual is that? There's 4 or 5. So we've seen the maximum of 5. We've seen the minimum of 0. And we're producing numbers that are in, that, in the range 0 to 5, which is not quite what we want, right? But it is how many numbers we want in our range. We want 1 to 6, so we have 6 different numbers, but now they're 0 to 5, and we want 1 to 6. So the next thing we do is we shift. So we add a value to shift it. If we want to go from 0 to 5 to a range of 1 to 6, we need to add 1. So let's go ahead and do this to each one. and run it. Okay, now we have 1 to 6. We got happen to get them both in that run. Let's go ahead and run it again. And there we got, again we have it. And there we're getting them all in the range that we expect, 1 to 6. So no matter how many times we run this, our numbers are always going to be in ranges 1 through 6. So the pattern for figuring out getting this to go in the range that you want is first you want to mod by by how many numbers are in the range by the way that's a little tricky sometimes and then you want to shift to get the right range all right, let's choose another one. So let's do one. Let's go ahead and get numbers from negative 10 to positive 10. All right, so how many numbers are in that range? Off the bat, you might just think it's 20, but the way that you need to figure this, usually you're off by one if you just guesstimate, is you take the max minus the min and add one. All right, so if our max is 10, and we subtract minus 10, that gives us 20, and we add 1, that gives us 21. So that's going to produce it. So here we have, we're going to mod by 21, and that's going to remember the remainder, remainder, so it's going to give us from 0 to 1 less than the number, so that's going to give us in the range of 0 to 20 which is not quite what we want. But then the next thing we need to do is shift. So what do we have to shift by if we get 0 to 20? What do we have to shift to get it? We have to shift 
by minus 10. So we'll go here and we'll shift by minus 10. And let's go ahead and do that to each one. And see what our number is then. And there we have some numbers that are in the range from negative 10 to positive 10. They are negative 10 to positive 10. And we're getting numbers in that range as we go. And we're getting a different set each time. All right, so this is what we've learned about random numbers. If we want to generate a random number, we call the function rand. Each time we call it, we get exactly one random number. If we need to identify what the range of random numbers produced by rand is, we access the named constant rand max. We've learned that we get the same random numbers unless we call s rand. And if we call s rand, then it seeds it. Notice that we only call s rand once. Even though we call rand over and over again, we only need to seed it one time in a program. So that would seed our program. And then the last thing that we learned was that to get a range that we specify, a specific range, the first thing we need to do is mod by how many numbers are in the range, and then shift, use plus, to shift to get the right range. Notice here that you could do it with numbers that are input. If you were storing max and min, you could mathematically calculate how many numbers there are in the range, and then you can shift by the minimum amount to produce the range that you want.